24 hours this week, former President Donald Trump was indicted and booked at Miami federal court for 37 counts of hiding and then lying about classified documents, revealing national security information stored unsecurely at his home in Palm Beach. He was released and then he unleashed, turning that court date into a campaign rally. And along the way, some of his attorneys resigned. In the public domain right now, the evidence, the photos, transcripts of his own words Accused, accused criminals are presumed innocent, of course, until found otherwise. So today, we examine the view from the defense. David O. Marcus is one of South Florida's big-time veteran criminal defense attorneys who has represented big-name clients. He is also a professor and a podcaster, and he runs the Southern District Florida blog, which is a must-read for anyone in the industry. It is so great to have you here. Thanks for having and, me. Of course. Um, I've been really anxious to get your take on a lot of things because, you, you know, we've been talking about this all week from a prosecutorial lens. Yeah. So from a, in a scale, give me a 1 to 10. How, how damning is the evidence in that indictment? Well, you know, people forget that an indictment is not evidence, and the judge will instruct the jury, you know, do not take the indictment as evidence. One of my colleagues so likes to say... What do you say, call it? Yeah, it's, it's just an accusation. So one of my colleagues likes to say, you know, it's like an invitation to a wedding. It's not proof of a marriage. And so, <laughs> you know, we just had a, a trial of Andrew Gillum in Tallahassee. And if you read the indictment, people would say, oh, my goodness, Gillum's got to be guilty. Then you go to trial and they couldn't prove up anything that was in the indictment. Must have had a, a really good attorney. <laughs> he must then. have had a good <laughs> attorney. But no, but but you know, a lot of times people read that indictment and come to conclusions without hearing the proof. The trial's gonna take more than a month, Glenna. So it's it's you know, th that piece of paper isn't worth much. Okay, so so let's go through that. From a lay point of view, which yeah. most of us talking and listening are, there are photographs, yeah. there are transcripts of what the former president said that make it sound that he was talking about knowing that he had things he should not have had. He had an attorney actually c come forward in a way about he was asked to join this, the allegations of yeah. something, doing something criminally wrong. So, so when you read that, yeah, no, it, it, it's yeah. It, it, the, the attorney stuff especially sort of takes criminal defense lawyers breath away, right? To see yeah. a criminal defense lawyer's words and transcripts with a client is is really um, jaw dropping. And, and there's going to be a lot of litigation, I think, about whether they can use those attorney notes and and voice memos. It, it gave a chill down our spine to see that. Um, the prosecutor was able to get those. That's you know, we should be concerned about that. When somebody meets with a lawyer, you don't want the lawyer to be able to then give all that to the prosecutor. Well, but there's a reason for that, right? Because there, the <clears throat> attorney client privileged. I'm hearing the word was pierced. I guess that must be a legal jargon. It was pierced because he was allegedly part of induced to be part of a crime. Right, no, you're right. Um, it was pierced and, and it, that happens very infrequently. So to get at an attorney's notes or or privileged communications is very hard to do, as it should be. And so we have to be careful in doing it. Just because people don't like the defendant or want to make a case doesn't mean that that's a reason to get it. And, and all that material right now is sealed. In other words, the motions and everything else. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah. So right before the indictment, two of the former president's attorneys quit. Yeah. Um, and then there was a time on Sunday and Monday when he was looking for a local attorney who could practice it, yeah, under the Florida bar. What, will you call it all? So it's, I don't know it, if I, it, yeah, it's been reported that I, I have been. So so I don't like to talk about that. <laughs> okay. uh, um, but, but but you know I go there. Yeah, you have to I know, go there with I, me, I, I but know, I'm going to go there. I, I know Glenna. <laughs> um, no, no. It's, Why it, was it so difficult for him to get an attorney? You know, you have to remember. So so there's all these reports about why it's so difficult to work for the former president. You know, putting that aside, any lawyer who takes the case is going to have to basically put all of his other cases on the side, mm. and so it's going to be a full time job. Um, and, and so you have to be willing to sort of work 24-7 for the next 18 months. You know, people say, oh, this is going to be a quick trial. The prosecutor came out and said, uh, speedy trial. A speedy trial is only a defendant's right to a speedy trial, not a prosecutor. This is going to take a long, long time to get to trial, I think, after the election. And it's going to take a long time, largely because defense attorneys are going to be challenging a lot of things leading right up to the trial. Lots yeah. of motions. Yeah. Um, just to get um, uh, cleared by the, by the Classified Information Act is going to take a long time. She, the judge already ordered that process to start, but it's going to take months and months to get access to those documents. So how, how difficult is it going to be if the nature of the classification and the high 
low-level national security information, the lawyers are not qualified to see that. Will juror, I mean, eventually you can't qualify jurors to see that, can you? How, how will that be presented as evidence? Right, so I don't think the jurors will see it. They'll see like a summary. The lawyers will get access to it. We've handled those kinds of cases before, and it's a process. The FBI does a full background, and then you have to review the documents in, a, in a, a secure room where they lock you in with no cell phone so you can't take pictures. I mean, it's It's, it's kind of like federal court. It's like federal court. <laughs> it's true, you guys can't bring your cell phones in, which is yeah. crazy. We'll talk um, about that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's nuts. So, so the process is, is detailed and, and, and arduous. Yeah. Um, well, let, let's talk about that because reporters, journalists are allowed to bring in electronics after you've been vetted and sign off that you will obey the laws of the court, which everyone does, except that Monday, all of a sudden, no. And, and nobody that was not there firsthand could document what was going on in the biggest trial. It's not right. And, and, you know, in state court, of course, we have cameras, so we can see what's going on right. in state court. In federal court, no cameras, which is, is, is insane. Why um, is that? You, you know, know, it starts from a long, long time ago, and, and judges did, just did not want to have um, their courtrooms turned into sort of circuses. Uh, we have not seen that in state court, by the way. I'm not going to take offense to that. <laughs> yeah, that no, we, no, don't, we do not do circus I, in court. I, I agree, and, and I think reporters, there should be cameras, and certainly reporters should be able to have their cell phones so that they can get the information out. I mean, the reports this week about the Palmetto High students sort of running back and forth from inside the court to the payphone, which they had to be taught how to use because they had never seen a payphone before. That was, that was brilliant. That was a brilliant idea, I have to say. A amazing. Yeah. Um, my daughter's friends were running back and forth in the court to the payphones after sleeping out all night to get into the courtroom. Well, by the we way. had a reporter in the courtroom, Leanne Morahone, who literally ran out, and we were in a commercial break, so I was saying to her, you know, don't, don't run, we're good, don't get out of breath. Um, real, real quickly, we have a couple of minutes left. What is your best juror on this case. What are you looking for in a juror? You know, it's going to be really interesting to see how the jury is selected. There's going to be a juror questionnaire, so you're going to learn a lot about jurors, depending on where the case is. If the case is held in Miami, the jurors that Trump wants are going to be very different than if it's held in West Palm or Fort Pierce. Um, and, and, you know, there's going to be stealth jurors. There's going to be um, What's a stealth juror? A stealth juror is someone who, who sort of lies to get on the jury because they want to be uh, seen and, and heard about the case. You're going to have to vet those people out. We saw it in the Glenn Maxwell case. One of the jurors lied and then afterwards, of course, got caught lying about being a victim of sexual abuse, and that's the basis of the appeal. Um, we're going to have to do a lot of vetting of these jurors, and they'll yeah. be uh, consultants and so on helping out. So what is, what is your, you as a defense attorney for the defense, what is that? terrific juror for you. You know, in this like. case, I think it's pretty easy. Someone who, who's a Trump supporter, Republican, um, and those are going to be easy to find um, down here in South Florida. And it's you not don't think prosecutors will strike? Well, they, they get, te the, the prosecution only gets six strikes. So, so they will be able to strike six people for whatever reason, then they'll get their cause challenges, which is there has to be a, a valid reason. So you'd look for the political angle over a juror who will look for at the evidence fairly and look at the jury instructions and follow them? Well, a, a, let's make no mistake, both sides want to win this case. So the, the defense is going to try to get jurors that will vote for the defense and the prosecution who says they're looking out for justice, no, they're trying to win just as much as the defense and they're going to look for jurors who are going to support them. I mean, you know, this is sort of a, a false thing where that, you know, we want jurors who are fair. No, both sides want jurors who are going <laughs> to vote for them. I mean, honestly. I'm not sure I heard anyone quite that honest here. It's so the truth. Thanks so much it's the here. truth. David O. Marcus, great to have you, and thank you so much for that really interesting perspective. Thank you so much back. for having me. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Sure thing.